In this video we cover an interesting principle called Pascal's Principle. Pascal's Principle is simply a very small statement that says a change in pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished. What I mean by that? It means the same amount that you exert at one point of fluid is transmitted to every other point of the fluid and it's also transmitted to the walls of the container. So let me show you what that means because it's actually got some really amazing implications. Let's say that you had a container like this and let's say you had a little piston or something up here and right now it's just sitting there and at some depth below the surface say right here there's some pressure PA let's say and according to Pascal's law which we've ever covered previously the pressure at each point for the same depth has the same pressure then at another point let's say right here there's a pressure PB and each point in the fluid has that pressure. Now if you come back and apply an additional pressure to your system so instead of just the plunger let's say that we now go and stick an extra bar up here some mass and that extra mass now adds an additional pressure P star so before we had maybe pressure P naught now we have P star plus P naught then here's what Pascal's principle says it says that if you go to the same place right here and you were to look for this pressure it would not be PA it would be PA plus P star this extra pressure that you added has been added to this point each point here in the fluid and furthermore if you were to go down here and look at this points this would not be PB this would be PB plus P star it's as if this pressure somehow magically came down here and pushed this incredible fact is what Pascal's principle says and furthermore it says it doesn't just end here in the fluid when you look at this thing over here the wall has PA plus P star so you've increased the pressure on the wall the bottom here has increased to PB plus P star so not just every point in the fluid but also to the walls of the container themselves this very useful fact is used in lots of things to understand the way a pressure is transmitted in a fluid whether it be a hydraulic system for instance in a, your car or mechanical engineering a submarine or any other type of fluid this principle is very important so you'll want to pay attention simple statement but very profound and can have all sorts of things that you might not expect surprising results to actually understand it let's take an example of a submarine Pascal's principle says that if there was no gravity because there were air above the thing that air pushing on the surface of the water would be transmitted undiminished to every point along the submarine so the submarine does not just get a pressure at one point but every point along it would have pressure due to the air pushing on the surface up here is transmitted undiminished to every point along the surface of the sub now it turns out that the sub will have a greater pressure at the bottom because of the weight of the water but it also sees the pressure from the air goes undiminished throughout all the depth 
Let's look at some other examples. Pressure on a vessel. Let's take the case of a small piece here. In order for this to be in equilibrium, if this is very small and we can neglect gravity for a minute, so I don't have a weight arrow, if there was no gravity and there was no weight in this thing, then the pressure here across that era, area would create a force, and that force would be trying to accelerate the block down. There would have to be an equal and opposite pressure, creating an equal and opposite force to push it back up so that it doesn't accelerate. Likewise, the fluid over here, let's say right here, this piece of fluid, is pushing against the fluid next to it, trying to accelerate it this way. In order to ensure that that doesn't happen, the wall must imply an equal and opposite force, and for the same area, therefore an equal and opposite pressure in the opposite direction. So when you push down, that causes this fluid to push this away which causes the wall to push back. But if the wall pushes on the fluid, then the fluid pushes with an equal and opposite force on the wall. And that's how the wall gets the transmitted force from up here. Let's look at something else. Let's say that you had a container like this. There's the water. Here's P naught, the air pushing down. Right below this, you can think that there's a column of water. And consequently, there's a pressure here that's P naught plus rho times G times H, where H is this height. And that makes sense because you're holding up the weight of this column, maybe. But notice what Pascal's principle and Pascal's law says. It says that even if you only considered this point, which would appear to only have this column of water above it, it has the same pressure. In effect, this weight pushing down undiminished is transmitted to every other column around here so that every one of them has the same pressure. You might think that you shouldn't do that. Maybe the pressure you think should only be some H prime, but that's not what it is. It turns out it goes back to the surface where this external pressure is pushed. So an enclosed fluid, this push here, is transmitted everywhere no matter what the shape of the vessel throughout the fluid. That is not something that's intuitively obvious. If you want to know more about this stuff, you might look at the MIT Open Courseware in Dr. Lewin's classes. Pascal's principle has some other interesting applications, and we'll look two more to finish this video. One is consider the pressure here at the surface. That means that pressure is automatically applied at every poise, for instance, on a dam. In addition, there is a certain height. So at each point, the pressure here, P, is P naught plus rho G H. The deeper that you go, the greater the force that will be applied to the dam. Consequently, the dam has to be made thicker in order to handle this water. Now, if you really want to minimize the amount of concrete while making exactly the strongest possible dam, and if you take the calculus based course, you'll eventually learn that the force goes up as y squared. It goes up parabolic. And so, consequently, you get this parabola shape that you see at big dams like Boulder Dam. Now the problem with that is to pour concrete in that kind of a weird shape, which by the way is usually pointed away from the water. In order to pour that, then that's difficult and expensive. So if the dam isn't too large, they'll often make the dam just linear like this. 
in some sort of a sloped earthen dam because it's easier to build. It takes more material than you really need for the strength, but it's cheap. And that's why things like Waco look like they're a flat dam, while the really big dams like Boulder and the Grand Coulee have a parabolic shape. The last thing for Pascal's principle is let's look at a hydraulic lift. So if you've played with a hydraulic jack to jack up your car, you apply pressure in one end on a plunger, and that plunger pushes up a bigger plunger which you put under the car to lift the car. You have a pressure that you applied. According to the rule, this pressure is transmitted undiminished to every part of the fluid, including right there. Therefore, there's a pressure pushing up, and those pressures here and here have to be the same. So let's compute their forces. Pressure is force per air. Per, I'm sorry, pressure is force per area. So we'll call this side one, this side two. And I therefore have force one over area one. But over here I have force two over area two. And those have to equal. Now what this says is, is that if you want to calculate the force over on the second side, F2 would equal the force that you apply times area 2 over area 1. So if you made this like 100, that is if you made this area here 100 times bigger than that area, you'd get 100 times the force out, enabling you with your hand to lift a car. Now you may think that, hey, I'm violating some sort of energy law here. You're not. The volume of fluid that you pump from here to here has to be the same. So the volume is area 1 times D1. That is the distance that you displace. Call this D1. And that has to equal area 2 D2. Now let's see. If I look at that, work 1 is force 1 times d1, but work 1 is equal to force 1 times volume over area 1. Well, that's just p times v. If I look at on the second side, it's the force 2 times d2. But that would be force 2 volume over area. So work 2 is just P again times volume. They have the same volume. They have the same pressure. So therefore, they have exactly the same work. Any work you do on one side is transmitted. So you have conservation of energy. Now this says that if it's 100 times the area, you'll have to push it a hundred times the distance. That's why you have to jack so many times on the hydraulic jack to raise your car just a little bit. Now they do try to do some tricks by moving and adding extra fluid and doing some other things, but this is the basic way a hydraulic jack works. And I'll go ahead and put this all in your notes. F1, A2, A1. All right. That finishes Pascal's principle.